Und ich freue mich sehr, dass wir hier heute zwei Gäste haben. Stanislaus von Moos, einer der beiden Kuratoren der Ausstellung, und Nathaniel Kahn, der Sohn von Louis Kahn, der 2004 einen Film gedreht hat. Er ist mein Architekt. By developing the concept, you, you developed certain ideas, how you wanted to approach Louis Kahn. No, uh, I think we had two challenges, um, uh, or actually two models or anti-models. And the, the first one, which I had not seen, is the exhibition done by Heinz Ronner. Uh, the other model was the one produced by my two uh, art historian colleagues, David DeLong and David Brownlee, who did the uh, huge uh, Khan exhibition. So we needed to find a third solution. So we wanted nature, we wanted science, we wanted monumentality, I mean, r ruins and archetypes is the section that we, uh, we call. We wanted community. We wanted uh, to isolate a number of issues that we uh, considered as topical for the work of Khan and beyond that as topical for architecture in the second half of the, of the 20th century oh, and involving true. also the most important uh, of the people with whom he worked, like uh, the engineer Le Ricolet, the engineer oh, the Auguste uh, Commandant, uh, who were both teaching at Penn together with him, uh, Josef Albers, who was teaching uh, at um, Yale University, and the more one looks into this with an eye on Albers, one grasps the connection that Kahn has with the Bauhaus tradition, which is something that my colleagues in the 1990s did not really look into uh, because they were convinced that the great message that Kahn has to bring forward is the discovery of history, of classicism, of Roman antiquity and, and the, the pantheon, which is all extremely important. But we thought apparently behind that facade of neoclassicism and of Bozar revival, uh, there's another, uh, there's another creature that is obsessed with quite different issues that have also to do with the Enlightenment tradition, but have to do with the natural sciences. So that was an aspect which we, we found extremely uh, productive. And the, the main space, actually the first, the central space of the gallery here um, is, is dedicated to that subject. And then landscape, the nature, uh, turned out to be uh, a, a major issue that is uh, particularly becoming extremely important towards the end of uh, Lou Kahn's uh, career. And so Stanislaus just gave an insight into the intellectual approach through the exhibition um, to such a work. On the other hand, Nathaniel, you with your film, you chose a very different um, approach to Lou Kahn, obviously because he, he was your father launched me quite a, quite a fastball. I'll, I'll try to hit it here. Um, I've always found that architecture shows somehow fall short of capturing the spirit of the architect. But I really think you've succeeded in a marvelous way. The man is there too. Well, we have some other film material in the exhibition where we interviewed a lot of co living contemporary architects about uh, their inspiration from, from Louis Kahn. And we started with uh, Frank Gehry, Peter Zumthor, um, Renzo Piano, ending up with younger architects like uh, Su Fujimoto, uh, Alejandro Ravenna. But I think the interviews you have in the show are enormously helpful, um, and they, they really create a context um, for Lucan's work, which is, which is wonderful. Uh, for me, in making my architect, um, I wanted to create a journey, and Stanislaus actually has wonderfully talked about it as a kind of detective story. Yeah, in the film, I wanted to have experiences the way you would meet someone um, in, you know, in life. This is a clip not selected by me. I, I let Stanislaus just choose. Although these changes have come. Uh, hello, Mr. Katz. Uh, this is Nathaniel Kahn returning your call. Uh, yes, I, I would like very much to hear uh, what you saw that night in Penn Station, New York. Thanks. Bye-bye. Nice to meet you. Right. Right. There was a policeman here, and a policeman here, and the dead man was here. I see this face of this guy, and he didn't look very well. Did you know he was dying? It was clear to you? That... I've never seen anybody die. I wonder if I'll ever find out exactly what happened that night in Penn Station. For years, I thought maybe my father hadn't really died, and that he was out there somewhere, living a parallel life. 
it's a fascinating plot. I mean, a mysterious plot. There's a mysterious death. One doesn't know exactly what, what happened. Okay. Um, there is a victim. Or there are potentially many victims, but certainly one victim who happens also to be the narrator and who happens also to be the detective. It's this remarkable the therapy session because I'm looking at you with the beard and the glasses. My God, I'm in Freud's studio here. This is, this is, this is terrifying and, and fabulous, too. I'm, I'm, are you the director or is your cameraman the director? Because in a certain sense, um, you could not have anticipated all what happens in the conversation. It was very clear to me that I was going to go to all of, as many of my father's buildings as I could, but then the key was to create experiences that would happen within these contexts mm -hmm. when this guy called and left a message saying he had something that was very emotional to tell me that we were actually in San Diego shooting uh, the sock sequence. And I thought, Union Station, Los Angeles, that's a good spot. To now, then the cameraman takes over, absolutely. And even as I'm hearing this really macabre story about Penn Station, yeah. part of you is thinking, oh my god, this man is talking about my father. The other part of you is saying, this is a great scene. This is going to be fabulous. <laughs> so this this happens all the time, and and it's it's a it's a it's a wonderful, very mm. uh, hallucinogenic experience. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. what makes a great film or a great detective story is also a complicated plot. He okay. raises from from this uh, very very modest background, becomes the greatest architect of his generation, and um, does so much work. Is so much focused on his work that his private life becomes rather complicated, but he doesn't worry too much. Uh, then he dies under mysterious circumstances and leaves behind practically three families with three wonderful children who barely know each other. We knew each other about each other more than we sort of let on in the film. I see. So, but it's, not, okay. it's not total BS. It's well, just a little, bit, well, a little But I do think that landscape plays such a powerful role in in um, Louis, Louis Kahn's architecture, so so powerful, and many times really misunderstood. Um, and I think you know the Kimball piece. We really wanted to show how the landscape interacts with the building. But remember, it's for an exhibition, and the sounds are meant to be evocative rather than specific. Uh, here, I would like you to say something about music. I mean, there's an intriguing electronic music that uh, resonates with the flow of water, whereas in My Architect, you really come in with Beethoven. Actually, and clearly, here's the ninth in the background, and Freude, Schöner, Götterfunken, etc. And um, that is a, a moment which is, I, I would say, a little bit over the top. But, uh, so, what we tried to do, to do so, uh, though, was to find a sound that somehow represented light. light. Then, what happens when there's a shadow? And now we're in the realm of what um, Lucan talked about, which is that uh, you know that that light never knew how great it was till it struck the, the side sun. of the building. The sun. The sun. The sun. Yes. But film certainly finds things in the editing process. So we're going to show you a clip of visual associations that happened entirely accidentally in this. The color yellow. No, I swear I didn't plan it. And there was there's a very very famous editor who um, came up to me after this and said. It's so incredible. The yellow for Scythia after the armband. I said, oh, yes, yes, of course. We planned that. I had, I'd never even seen it. Never. The other one that means even more to me is how much Frank Gehry from the back looks like Louie. And I think one of the things that I'm so thrilled about about the show which is the interplay between Louie's architecture and the Frank Gehry building. There's this really wonderful energy that's going on between these two guys talking to each other in architecture. So I think a building can give you the sense of the shortness of your own life um, and somehow the length of art, that art persists beyond us as you've now made a show about an artist now who's gone. Yet he's there. He's still here. Part of his love of ruins is that ruins um, exist before we were there. They'll be there after we were there. So it's, it's so beautiful what you say. It's actually a beautiful conclusion.